What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, welcome. Today we are going to be talking about the Canine Good Citizen program from the AKC. If you are not already familiar with what this is, the AKC is the American Kennel Club and they created the Canine Good Citizen program, the CGC, in order to help you and your dog be the best you you can be together. The idea behind it is that the Canine Good Citizen training will help create a long lasting bond between you and your dog to help you become a better neighbor, friend, whatever, to whoever you are around. Plus, if you're interested in going even further with this into other AKC programs, this lays a good foundation if you want to get into agility, if you want to get into tracking, or if you want to get into different performance events. In order to prepare for this test, you can do your prep at home on your own or you can find a trainer to help you prepare for the test. In my situation, I have two golden retrievers and I chose to go through a trainer. So I found a qualified trainer and we did six weeks of training per dog and I believe it was $130 per dog to do the classes. Whenever you are practicing for this test, you are able to use treats. You are able to use whatever collar that you need to use. However, when it comes to test day, on the test, you cannot use those type of corrective collars. Anything above a martingale, to my knowledge, you cannot use. You cannot use any form of treats. So when I was practicing for the test, I used pinch collars, I used a star mark collar, and I used the martingale. I used treats very, very, very few times because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to use them on the test. I wanted them to be aware that their reward was going to be me being proud of them, excited, raising my voice, going crazy for them. And as far as the corrective collars, I was so completely against it at first, but I am so glad that I ended up doing it because their leash behaviors, their leash manners have improved so much since I used them. They act totally different on a regular collar than they used to. To give you some tips on practicing for the test, I would say to practice everywhere and anywhere that you can. We would practice in a different park, a different parking lot, a different store, different yard, just anywhere that we can think of. Don't just practice inside. What you get inside and what you get at home is going to be a lot different than what you actually get for the test. Your dog is used to your house. They're used to how it smells. They're used to the different sounds, but outside there's all different types of smells and sounds and distractions that are constantly going on that you need your dog to be used to listening to you and still doing everything that you need them to do even with these distractions. I took the girls to stores probably three, four times at least a week. One thing that I personally noticed is that when I was taking them into stores to practice, people thought that I was training them for therapy. So they thought that they couldn't touch the dogs. So I just kind of ended up watching people's body language and if they were looking at my dog and looked like they wanted to pet the girls, I would simply say, would you like to pet them? I'm working on training them and I would appreciate any help you could give me. And a a lot of people were excited that I even asked them if they wanted to pet the dog and that's exactly what they said. They didn't think that they could because they thought that I was training them for therapy. Even if they didn't have a therapy vest on, that's what people will assume. Another tip is to pay attention to yourself. I never realized how much dog training is about you until I did these tests. I was so focused on what they're doing and if they're listening, I wasn't paying attention to myself. Emotions will run up and down the leash. They told us this a million times and it is so true. Pay attention to your body language. Pay attention to how you speak your tone of voice, how you're saying something. Pay attention to how patient you are. If you are getting frustrated, your dog is going to shut down. I tend to get angry and annoyed very quickly, very easily, and I really had to learn to control that when it comes to the girls because as soon as I do that, they check out. And I never want them to feel like I'm giving up on them because that's not fair to them. That's a me problem, not a them problem. So always pay attention to yourself just as much as you're paying attention to them. Now when it comes to test day, before you can take the test, you have to sign the responsible dog owner's pledge. Just saying that you agree that you will do your best to take care of your dog's health needs, their safety, 
their exercise, their training, and their quality of life. Basically being a responsible dog owner. Even little things such as cleaning up after your dog while you are in public. Once you sign the pledge, you are able to take the test. The test involves 10 different little tests that you have to pass. You have to pass all 10 of the tests in order to actually get your CGC title. So what are these 10 tasks, these 10 individual tests? First test is to accept a friendly stranger. Basically, this is like if you're out in an everyday situation and someone comes up to you and you're chatting with whoever. So what will happen is you stand up and you have your dog sit next to you and the evaluator, whoever's doing your test, will come up to you and start talking to you about a casual conversation, everyday life, and they will ignore your dog. The idea is that your dog can't show any form of shyness or resentment to this random person. You're supposed to shake hands for this test, but because of COVID, we skipped the shaking hands part. As long as your dog is able to do this without reacting, you should be fine. So go up to different people, have a conversation with them with your dog sitting next to you so that you can practice. As for the test, they don't necessarily have to be sitting beside you they just have to be by your side not reacting to the person just for me personally I want them to be sitting whenever they are greeting somebody in general so just as a habit I want them to sit when they see people even if I'm just talking to them the second test is sitting politely for petting this test your dog has to be sitting next to you they have to actually sit for this one and what will happen is the evaluator will come up to your dog and they will start petting them they will pet their head pet their body and the dog cannot react to them they can't start to jump up or lunge at them they can't show any resentment or shyness you are able to talk to your dog during this time and the dog is able to stand to accept the pet but it cannot jump so same thing when you're out in public and people are asking to pet your dog this is why I want them to sit even if I'm just talking to them it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone when it comes to training for it for me and my dogs who love people this was the hardest part of the test for me to break because every time they see people they lose their mind and they want to jump so getting them to sit before they had any type of interaction from a person was very difficult and took a lot of practice the third test is appearance and grooming so this is basically your dog welcoming someone to groom them whether this is the groomer veterinarian a friend a stranger whatever they will accept this in a polite manner this also demonstrates the owner's sense of care, responsibility, and concern for the dog. So what will happen is again the evaluator will come up to the dog and basically inspect it. The evaluator will just make sure that it is well taken care of. They will check their ears, they will touch their paws, they will run a brush down their back. Basically they're just making sure the dog is healthy, well taken care of, at a proper weight, etc. You will bring a brush from home so that your dog is familiar with this brush and that's what they will use for you for the test. For me taking classes, I brought this same brush every single time we went to classes and every single time we practiced. When I'm out in public, I didn't carry the brush with me, but I would simply just ask people to run their hands down the dog's back when they're petting them and not just pet their head so it kind of mimicked the feeling of brushing. For this test, your dog doesn't have to hold any specific position Obviously they can't be jumping up on the evaluator, but you are able to talk to your dog praise them and talk to them throughout this whole part of the test. The fourth test is out for a walk. This is them walking on a loose lead. This basically is just showing that the handler is in control of the dog. The dog can be on either side for this test, but for AKC purposes, we healed on the left because if you are doing any AKC performance, it is usually on the left side, but for agility, they train on the right. For this test, you can also talk to your dog you can give them commands, you can give them praise. You have to be able to do a right turn, a left turn, and an about turn while they are in heel position. And also when you stop, they should automatically sit. So for this, we would walk in a huge circle and they would have to be in a heel position. They would have 
have a loose leash, they weren't pulling on the leash, they would be paying attention to us, they'd be attentive to us. And also we had cones that we would go up to in classes and we would practice doing a right turn, left turn, and an about face. An about face is basically going straight up to an object and automatically turning straight back around. Instead of going around it, you were just going straight up to it and immediately turning right back. We practice this obviously everywhere, but around trees, around different poles and stores, this was really helpful. Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store that has an outdoor patio that you can practice in is great because you have a bunch of poles outside that you can easily practice healing around. The fifth test is walking through a crowd. So basically this is just showing that your dog can walk lightly past pedestrians through a crowd and be under control when they are in public places. For this test, you are also able to talk to your dog, you're able to communicate with them, give them praise, commands, whatever you need to do, leave it. You have to have at least three people in order to do this test for a crowd. So what we would do is we would take turns getting up and walking through the crowd of the evaluators or any random people that were in there and and they would hold a clipboard. And whenever we were walking by them, we would walk different directions. They would drop the clipboard so that it made a loud sound. The dog is able to notice that there is a sound, but they cannot show any resentment, shyness, or jump or pull on the leash at that distraction. So for this to practice, again, going to these hardware stores, I'm telling you, it's so helpful. I would make Larcy sit and watch people on forklifts, or I would make Koba watch somebody do something on the scissor lift. Just anything that I could think of, but just have a distraction that she had to just sit there, listen to me, pay attention to me while this other crazy thing was going on. Test number six. This is sit and down on command and also being able to stay in place. So basically this is obviously just proving that your dog is able to sit or down on command and also to stay in whatever place you put them in for an extended period of time. Now for training purposes, I bought 30 foot leads for my dogs. Again, for the purpose that if they're able to do this with a 30 foot lead, they should be able to do this with a 20 foot lead with ease. So for this test, instead of their traditional five foot leash, they will put on a 20 foot lead. Your dog changes leashes, has this long lead on, and you will ask your dog to sit. They should sit on command. You will ask them to down they should down on command. Now you can choose for the stay if you want them to be in the down position or if you want them to be in the sit position. So what I did for both of the girls is I had them sit and down, then I'd have them sit back up from the down position and stay in the sit position for the stay. You can gently guide them, but you cannot force them to actually do either of the two. Once you have them in either a down or a stay, whatever you're preferring, you will walk out the full 20 foot to the end of the leash. Then you will walk back to them. They should stay in the stay position until you come back to them and release them. Test number seven is coming when called. So for this, we kept on the 20 foot lead. We'll tell the dog to sit or down, whatever position that you want, have them stay, and we'll walk out half the lead for the 20 foot, so we'll basically be 10 foot away from the dog, and then we will call them to come to us. So while we are walking out the 10 feet, they have to stay until we call them to come to us. Test number eight is reacting to another dog. This test is basically to ensure that your dog will behave in a well-behaved, polite manner around other dogs. So for this, two handlers and their dogs will approach each other from about 20 feet. To practice this, I would take my dog and someone else would take their dog. We would come on opposite ends of the room, come up to greet each other. For this, we stayed six feet apart, but typically you would shake hands, exchange pleasantries, and the dog just basically can't show any aggression, shyness, any reaction to the other dog or the dog's handler. So obviously they can show interest, they can acknowledge that they're there, but they can't react to them in a negative manner. For me, I obviously did this with strangers, but even when people came over, if I had family come over or if we went to go visit family or friends, we constantly were practicing this. When we first got Larcy, I loved it when she came home and she's jumping all over me, this little tiny cute little puppy and we're all excited, she's all excited. And I was like, okay, well it's fine if she does it to us, but she can't do it to other people. 
trouble. Well, you can't think that way because the dog doesn't separate the two. That's our fault that she had trouble with that and it's very difficult to untrain that. So if you just start it from the beginning, I promise it'll probably be a lot easier. Test number nine is reaction to distraction. This is basically just showing that your dog is confident during any sort of distraction. Again, this is my purpose, my reason for always wanting to train outside, train in different places, train in different stores where there's all types of different things going on at all times. So what will happen is the evaluator will present with two different types of distractions. Whether this is a wheelchair, a cane, dropping something in front of them, squeaking something in front of them, who knows what it might be, but basically the dog has to listen to you and not react to the distraction. So even at home, if we're just sitting here, I had my husband squeak balls, make sounds, play with toys, play with their treats, and I would have to make sure that girls just literally sat there and took it, did not react. Definitely took a little bit of practice. For this, the dog may express a natural curiosity and interest, and they may appear slightly startled, but they cannot panic. They cannot try to run away, they cannot show aggression, and they cannot bark. You are allowed to talk to your dog throughout this test. You're allowed to show them praise, give them commands, whatever you need to do. Again, going out in public, I can't tell you how important it is to train your dog in public. Even if you're just starting out and you're nervous about what people are going to think, everyone starts somewhere and people are going on about their day. People really aren't going to sit there and care about what you're doing and pay attention. So don't overthink it. Go by anywhere where someone's going to be in a wheelchair or a walker or using a cane. Anything that your dog might not see on a day-to-day -day basis, they need to have exposure to it. Test number 10. This is supervised separation. This is basically proving that your dog can be left with a trusted person while still maintaining their training and a good manner. My separation anxiety is a thing. Their separation anxiety is not a thing, thankfully. For this, the evaluator will come up to you and they will say something like, would you mind if I watched your dog? And they will take their leash from you and they will take their dog and they will go into a separate room. While you are separated, this separation will last for three minutes. The dog does not have to stay in any specific position for the evaluator, but it cannot bark, it can't show aggression, it can't whine, and it can't pace basically anything that would show anything more than a mild agitation or mild nervousness. During this time, your evaluator might talk to your dog, but they shouldn't be engaging in excessive talking, any petting, or any management attempts trying to console them or comfort them. So for this test, obviously I'm not going to go up to a stranger and ask them to watch my dog for me for three minutes, but definitely friends and family ask them to do this with you. It's hard to do this with just your spouse or someone that they're around every single day because they're already used to them, they're already comfortable with them. And those are the 10 different tests that you have to pass in order to get your Canine Good Citizen title from the AKC. My oldest, Golden, she was a year and a half at the time that she took this test. She ended up passing the test after five weeks of training. And with Koba J, my youngest golden, she was about eight months whenever she took this test and she passed her test after four weeks of training. So they both graduated early, which was really nice, really exciting, because I was very stressed about them taking their tests. I even backed into the garage door one day because I was so stressed over this stupid freaking test, but it's all good, it all worked out. Hopefully you found this helpful. I tried to make it as detailed as I could just to give you as many tips as I can. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are not already. And as always, we will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!